tundra regions tundra regions roughly lie beyond 65 degrees north in the northern hemisphere of the coniferous forests they are sort of like hot deserts hot deserts are too hot which has got very less rainfall less than 25 cm whereas in the cold desert the temperatures are too cold but the rainfall is similar to the hot deserts very meager and less than 25 cm so both these regions have got very scanty precipitation or rainfall scanty vegetation and very sparse or little population so the location of tundra region is as i told you above 65 degrees in the northern hemisphere there is a permanent layer of snow which is beyond this point tundra is the name which is particularly given to the vegetation so it's a kind of vegetation which is found in the frigid zone even though there is frigid zone in the southern hemisphere but there is no tundra vegetation there so the regions which have tundra vegetation are the northern parts of canada in alaska northern scandinavian countries greenland iceland spitsbergen islands and siberia region here the winters are extremely and severely cold and extends up to 9 to 10 months the ground is fully covered with snow which is almost like permanent snow the temperatures drop below the freezing point which is minus 35 degrees to 40 degrees centigrade so the winters are extremely gloomy and dark as well as severely cold so this particular region has got a very long period of twilight twilight is a time period when the sun sets down and Uh, the night emerges that is a time between the sun setting down or the daylight ending but it is not completely night and there is still light at the time of the twilight the sky is illuminated with light when the sun comes down within 18 degrees of horizon and as the sun sinks to 18 degrees below the horizon the light is furnished by the reflection of thousands of celestial bodies on the white snow and ice the northern lights are visible at higher latitudes these are called as aurora borealis northern lights are only visible in few countries like norway finland iceland and greenland and in very rare occasions they are also observed in ladakh which is in india so basically what are northern lights these are electrically charged particles or radiations of the sun which enters into the earth's upper part of atmosphere or upper layer of the atmosphere and they are coming at a very high jet speed around 300 to 500 kilometers per second and get scattered in all directions they are also called as solar winds Now let's talk about the natural vegetation of Tundra region. The natural vegetation consists of bushes. So there are several types of bushes which are found which borders the coniferous belt. So after the bushes we find the coniferous trees. The bushes consist of dwarf plants like like alders, birches, junipers and willows. they are basically small stunted plants or bushes then there is some grass tundra remember tundra is a kind of vegetation so grass tundra consists of mosses lichens sedges as well as flowering plants this type of vegetation can withstand extreme climatic conditions cold weather season as well as they have minimum moisture reduction or transpiration it can also remain alive beneath the snow whenever there is snowfall in winter during the summers when there is no snowfall the land is filled with bright flowers there are colorful patches of small flower bearing plants in some regions there are also berry bearing shrubs so berries grow everywhere in the summer months they blossom and they wither in a very short duration of time 
trees cannot grow here because the surface is normally frozen for three to four months and there is a subsoil which is frozen permanently so there is a cover of snow which is permanent as trees cannot grow below 10 degree centigrade as we consider the animals of this region there is reindeers as well as musk osk which is mostly found the other common animals which are found in the tundra region are polar bear wolverine sable lemmings blue fox then there is the arctic hare or rabbits as well as the arctic fox all these animals are well adapted to the environmental conditions of the tundra the animals have got very thick skin fur and also wool which keeps them quite covered during the winter months the arctic fox has got gray fur in summers but in winters they turn into white the thick layers of fat as well as fur helps them to protect themselves and provide food to reserve for the winter months there are also whales seals which live along the coastal regions there are halibut salmon cod all these types of fishes in summers when the upper layer of ice cover melts then there is a subsoil layer which is left which is frozen permanently and this results in a swanji swamp which is called as muskeg and bogs which are everywhere these swamps are basically grounds for mosquito breeding and numerous insects as well as black flies are living on these swamps which become very unbearable for human beings as well as for the animals of the forest now if we talk about the population of the tundra region the population is very sparse or very less and there are lots of struggles in order to exist in these harsh conditions therefore these regions are known as barren lands or cold deserts because the population does not exceed beyond a number have heard about Eskimos. Eskimos are natives of North America. They live usually by hunting and fishing. Eskimos spend their time normally hunting, fishing, trapping, especially in the summer months. Fishes remain under the ice in winter season along the sea coast. Holes are dug into the ice in order to catch them. Fishes and meat constitute a very important part of their diet. Arctic char, salmon, seal, walruses, polar bear, caribous are all small games which enable them to survive in the cold winters. They usually consume the meat raw. They even consume lots of fats so that they can keep themselves warm in winter season. The women serve their husbands with spoonfuls of liquid fat so that they can prepare themselves and remain healthy during the hunting expeditions. Eskimos make small boats which are called as kayaks and umayaks which are skillfully handled so that they can do fishing. Their house consists of igloos which is made up of ice as well as crude shelters, stone huts. Crude shelters are huts which are made up of animal skin as well as they are supported by driftwood and whale bones. There are special dogs which are called as huskies who are very useful in this kind of climatic conditions. Huskies have got huge strength, stamina and power to stand the frozen temperatures and also makes them suitable as a transport animals. Eskimos are found along the Bering Sea and the Arctic Ocean. Bering Sea is the sea between Asia as well as North America. This is the shortest distance between North America and Asia. Eskimos mostly practice hunting and fishing. In summer, they kill animals like seals, polar bears, walruses, ducks and geese. And in winters, they harpoon the seals through the holes in the frozen sea. So harpoons are basically very sharp spears 
and they are normally used for catching and hunting whales walruses seals and different kinds of big sea creatures eskimos catch and hunt caribous in the tundra in the winter season when they are full of fur and also trap other fur bearing animals whose skins are sold to the white traders they use every bit of the animal that they hunt the flesh of the animals or the meat is eaten by eskimos as well as their dogs and the bones and the teeth are basically made into different tools and instruments and ornaments even the skin is made into clothes and boats as well as for making their tents and houses then we talk about the laps who normally live in the northernmost part of scandinavia scandinavia are the countries which border the arctic region which are finland sweden denmark norway all these countries are extremely cold the laps are culturally more developed as compared to the eskimos of north america many of them work in the forests they cut down the forest and also carry out the old age occupation of reindeer herding so the laps normally live in the mountains and these laps they keep large amounts of reindeers which they follow them to the mountains in the summer months the reindeers are considered to be the cow of the north the reindeers provide them with many things like food clothing as well as help them in transport so reindeer meat is also eaten raw by these laps and also frozen so that they can be kept for a longer duration of time and eaten during the cold months one reindeer can give only half a cup of milk which is very concentrated but since these families possess hundreds of these animals therefore the milk that they produce is sufficient enough for their consumption now we will talk about the inhabitants or the people who are natives of siberian tundra there is a tribe which is called as samoids which are very primitive and they have been living in this region for hundreds of years samoids are quite primitive and indigenous and they live in crude huts made up of stones and they mostly live around the arctic circle basically they keep animals like reindeer and they also wear the reindeer skins and they practice hunting as well as fishing there is another tribe which is called as the chukchis the chukchis live in regions which are extremely cold below 60 degrees centigrade they live mainly on seals walruses and polar polar bear and depend upon them for their food so chukchis live in semi circular huts which are made up of animal hides or skin mainly of seals and walruses There is some modernization in these regions because the government has tried to bring these tribes into the mainstream of modern culture and these people have been organized into groups and they work in collective farms. There is another group which is called as the Yakuts which are the inhabitants which are living in the northeastern part of Baikal river which is called as Trans Baikala. This region is near the Baikal lake and this is the coldest region of the earth's surface the temperatures can reduce up to minus 70 degrees centigrade